Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Wayne Miller. This is It's Movie Time. It sure is. Now look, we may be highbrow. Oh, but, but we have to we have to review for the people. Yes. All right. And we do and uh and why I love Margot Robbie so much. What movie? Uh, Suicide Squad. What else? <laughs> what else is out there playing right now? Yeah. The, but she's a good West Side type of girl. Yeah, she is. I she like her is. I, I do too. And boy, does she have a great ensemble cast with her this time. I'll tell you, James Gunn is the director. Yes. He did Marvel side Guardians yes. of the Galaxy, which was the to me the best of the whole Marvel cinematic right. universe so as he, far as fun <laughs> uh, fun fun movies. So he comes to direct the losers of the DC crowd. Yeah. <laughs> the losers they are. God <laughs> and them. the it's the key for both of those, the one he saved both franchises is the sense of humor. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I wonder what he could have done if he had done Black Widow, because that had a great uh, a sense of humor, particularly yes. by the little girl. But nowhere compared with this one. Oh, I this, mean, this is, is so like, over the top, <laughs> which has made it so much fun. This is Comedy Central. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. And uh, 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 your written review of the movie that you posted on WCB, I thought was spot on, and I liked how you opened it by talking about, you know, you do this, you die. You do All right, this, yeah. you die. And you're <laughs> telling these people. And uh, and she comes back with, you know, our little uh, Harley Quinn character, right. played, uh, marvelously played by Margot Robbie. But she comes back, you have personalized license plates, you die. <laughs> yes, yes. And, but there's so many throwaway lines. Oh. I'd like to see it again just Tell to me. catch some I'm, of I'm with you, yeah. Yes. Uh, so when we get a free moment, we ought to go back and see it, and we'll be the only ones in the theater again. Yes, I, well, uh, this was a, a, a sellout crowd. There must have been maybe a d dozen other people <laughs> in the theater know. with us, which, of course, and, of course, we made up like, uh, since there were four of us there, or five of us, you know, we made up a good thirty, uh, a third <laughs> of the audience. We did, and we're hooting and hollering and laughing, <laughs> tearing it off. Look at I listed by handwritten. I did. Oh, I okay. mean, I couldn't copy from IMDb. There's such a big cast. Yes, but I, the ones that I was most impressed with, and I have ten characters. Oh, who that, are they? Uh, uh, that just uh, that. Struck me as a part of the reason this is such a successful yeah. film is that even their minor characters, Gunn, somehow, magically, and this is what I like to see, made them memorable characters, and yet they have just, I mean, just a short time each yes. to establish themselves. Yes, and even well, and at the beginning, uh, uh, the first squad that basically went in. And yes, I mean, and. Uh, you talk about Hitchcock's MacGuffins, and here the MacGuffin here that you really don't care about is this like little South American island nation, you know, that uh, has this dictator and has the the weirdest looking little multicolored uh, starfish monster. Yes, right. Which I thought was in a way hysterical, as it's huge, and when it breaks out, it's lumbering around, and it looked like. You know, the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy. Well, listen, it, every it, time it sucks up somebody, it, 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 it gets bigger. <laughs> so it's, yes. And shoots out all these, like, smaller starfish yes. that latch. And it reminded me of um, uh, the John Hurt character in Alien. When he gets that thing oh, yes. rest on his we're face, right yes, here, exactly. these people are walking around with look like a big eyeball, which is the <laughs> belly of these little starfishes. But oh my God! Well, look at—they're all going to to shut down uh, the uh, dictatorship in yes. this small yeah. island off of South America, maybe. Yeah, Something I don't forget. Like yeah, that. anyway, yeah. they all look like Castro rejects in a way, <laughs> and it started off with a very stern Viola Davis. As yes, the, as the director of their Black Ops. Who does a great job. Oh, she's, she, she has a wonderful foil for all of them. Yes, she, and not only the uh, 
the villains that she springs from jail to send them on this suicide mission are almost like a dirty dozen. Type right, yes it is. But, but what I got a kick out of were some of the other supporting people, like the nerds who work for her. In the control. Oh room. yes, exactly. And they're yeah, and they're and they're joking. It, it, it reminds us of a number of young people we've worked with at Franklin University. Right. You know, just kind of dirty <laughs> people that that uh, really take her to task. Today. And what I love too, underneath them is their willingness to uh, to overthrow her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. So you've got insurrections going on all over the place, which winds up. And it's funny that. Um, uh, the first Suicide Squad that had at the very end a bit of a you know a preview so to speak during right. the end credits of that one was basically uh, Batman and or uh, played by Ben Affleck meeting Viola Davis about something here one of the characters who and we won't give it away but uh, who's killed off. And then in the end, in, in, once again, like the Marvel movies, you gotta stay to the end. And here <laughs> are her nerds uh, saying, "Oh, uh, he's alive. Well, you know, uh, we'll uh, we'll revive him in time uh, to save the world, yes. or whatever." Yeah. Setting up like, oh, but and so this again, is uh, you're reminding me. This is the Suicide Squad, different from the 2016 Suicide Squad, which yeah. was a failure. Yes, yeah, and I like uh, the, it. Was still enjoyable, but this one, right, much more so because I really like the uh, su the supporting cast of John yes. Cena. Uh, yeah, or uh, uh, Idris Elba. Uh, El El or El Idris Elba provides a little bit of weight as the leader. Yes, of this. Yeah. but he and Cena have a great combination there. Yeah, uh, yeah. trying to figure out who's the the best killer or the yeah. better killer between the two of them. Yes, and Cena. Is really riding high these days. Oh, yeah. oh, well, that and you know the uh, uh, with Vin Diesel playing yes. Vin Diesel's little brother, right? Yeah, you know, in the uh, the Fast and Furious Nine, exactly. Or something yes, like that. But he's good. But this one, he comes off of as a very uh, over eager, for, taking notes. You know, and the rest of them are all just kind of he's, sitting around. You know, as Viola is <laughs> telling him about the mission, he's. Studiously taking notes and it's very methodical. And he's, a, he's a kind of super right wing. Yes. I mean, and so a, a big, a balanced to Idris Elba, who's hardly that. But <laughs> Cena is, he plays it just, absolutely just right. What was it? He said, wearing a toilet on his head. No, it's not a toilet, it's a helmet of, yeah. you know, truth or whatever. And he says, I support, he's called the peacemaker. Yes. He says, yes. I support peace at any cost. <laughs> Which, it's almost like, Orwellian double speed. Oh, listen, and it, it is it is the way that Gunn structures it so that yeah. he comments upon the United States as it intrudes on other places. Yes, yes. And it's very nicely done because he it's just it passes you by when you hear him say, "Hey, that's that could be a satire of the United States." Yeah. Uh, and some of its worldwide connections. Yes, it's very good. Uh, the you always have to have. The strange one. Now, now we had <laughs> we had so Groot, many right. strange ones. We had Groot and one of the others, right? Uh, uh, yes, in the ga uh, uh, yeah, he was one of the guardians of the yeah, galaxy. right. So in this one we have Weasel. Weasel. Oh my God, this one. like uh, looked like a giant rat in a way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. And, and the wonder uh, you know, that the rat catcher girl who I really like. Yes. Uh, you know, would take a shine to him since she has such a way with the rats and a little rat with like one of those like support animal little vests that she carries around be with the, her. <laughs> it would be the one you'd have a representation of in your home. Yes. You would do the little, it was your, she's Daniela Melik Melchior. Yes. And I think we have something to see from her. As far as Weasel goes, uh, that's Sean Gunn. Yeah, yeah. And I suspect he's related. Yes, it's, uh, it's a brother. Oh, it is? Yes, because uh, something that I read that uh, it is his brother, and he had some other um, type of role, like maybe screenwriting. He, he did something else, and the brothers have worked right. together before. But yeah, he did a good job. I know, I think the one underneath all of this, the one you could ignore but you can't, would have to be King Shark. Yes, Sly Stallone, uh, which at first, I'm thinking, oh man, because yeah, I wasn't. Uh, uh, in a lot of these movies, 
even the Guardians of the Galaxy, as cute as they are, the little talking raccoon played by Bradley uh, yeah. uh, Cooper. Cooper in that one, and of course Groot uh, mm -hmm. on the tree, but uh, you know, not all that wild about uh, the use of some of this. I'm thinking, oh man, this giant shark. But I tell you, Stallone does his mumbling. Yes. Does a great job of that as he eats people and they're leaving and he's looking at all these dead bodies. Hmm. Uh, no, no. Right, no, right. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think his rat catcher said, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, no, no, no. As he would chew away. Yeah, just like Stallone himself. He's kind of stupid, but he's lovable. Yeah, very you know, lovable. Very. Shark, he's eating people all along the way. And he, yeah, but a shark that can walk. <laughs> yeah. And with arms. Yeah, where's these, uh, like, baggy uh, uh, Levi's, <laughs> these baggy jeans? I'm thinking, what the hell? Yeah. But uh, that was good. But then uh, uh, another one I think was a standout was Polka Dot Man. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. That is the most unusual uh, part of the Suicide Squad. I, I, we've, we've seen so many characters. Yes. The Polka Dot Man is really weird. <laughs> Very weird, because he's kind of rather this nerdy, effeminate type of guy who definitely has mother issues. You think? Oh my, well, and at first I'm thinking, why God, what, you know, because as, as he would get ticked off and throw these polka dots out, it looked like tiddly winks, you know, at people to destroy him, and he thinks of his mother, but... Uh, we, we have to stop now for our, it's movie time show. So what do you have any advice for people uh, as we exit here? I would say go to it. I strongly recommend it, but be aware that it is violent, it is bloody, there's gore, and go but also uh, go in with a sense of disbelief. Yeah. And and I would add before I turn off the camera, uh -oh. uh, I would add suspend your disbelief, please. Just go in and know and that it's good silly. Time. Yes, yes. Uh, go and take some popcorn and go, no, no. <laughs>